All right, what's up? Good morning, Game Changers. What's up, what's up, what's up? Getting started a little bit later this morning, but you know what? We wanted to make you guys just... Are you guys laughing because I said don't talk about it? Yeah, huh? I am actually no, no, no. inside. What I, what I said was not to talk about, like, we're late, we're traffic, and then just, hey, man, we're getting started addressing the elephant in the room. Hey, don't you just love it? We cannot not comment on the faces we see behind the screens. We just can't do it. So... We got started a little late this morning. I think you know that because it's 837. So, but we wanted to make you just kind of wait a little bit and just bask in the morning, the, the morning meditation, man, of the Holy Spirit. How much, how many know that that's just an amazing thing? We're going to sit there and focus and just came in. I'm getting ready for a podcast, but it's a little delayed. So I'm going to sit here for a second. You know what? I'm going to spend some time with the Lord. We're going to jump into this. So we had a little bit of a uh, mix up on the title. So today is the last day that you're going to see the title that we opted to not do. It was make a list, check it twice. That's why the screen is blue. Because this week we're doing zero to hero, which the team thought was next week. Here's the good news. The good news is we studied for zero to hero and make a list, check it twice. You know what? It sounds like Christmas. And I just about you guys, I'm, I'm going to save Christmas till next year. We've talked about Christmas or anything that sounds like it enough. So here we go. We're going to talk about zero to hero today. And you can make a list if you want. Make a list of these heroes that we're going to talk about. What is zero to hero? Initially, I'm going to throw another wrench into it. We talked about talking about heroes in the Bible, maybe going into like Hebrews 11 in the Hall of Faith. And I mean, to know that that's a great thing to do. And we may yet do that. I shifted it because zero to hero got me thinking about you know, when, when somebody counts you as a zero or you count your year as a zero or you count your progress as a zero, but yet God counts you as a hero. And we're going to talk about the unsung heroes, right? We're going to talk about people that were heroic in the Bible that, that never really got their horn tooted, so to speak. Nobody ever really patted them on the back. And they were instrumental. They were like, if you watch Ricky Bobby, they were like they were like the the, the slingshot move, right? What is it? What's the guy? Uh, the guy that you know the, the, the slingshot move basically was the best friend. Yeah, he was but the best friend. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But he was the guy who like took one for the team, so to speak. He, you know, he basically never got the recognition, but without him, the star wouldn't shine. And so we're going to talk about zero hero, the hero, unsung heroes this week. And uh, you know what? These are stories that are all familiar, though. And I think that you know, just because they are unsung, I believe that we've been we've been learning from them. Our, you know, the entire time that we've been believers, these are things that if you've been a believer since childhood for a long time, you might have learned about these in Sunday school. If you've been a believer, you know, you might even have learned about these in new believer classes or even in Sunday sermons because these stories are familiar to us. Um, a lot of them are nameless. And so they're the unsung heroes. Or they're ones who, they, they, they do great deeds, but they receive a little or no recognition for them. Amen? So today, we're going to talk about one that's m- one of my favorites, right? I preached on this story in, in, in 50 different ways. And so you may hear a lot of that today as well. Because when I talk about the story, there are things that I can't help but talk about that God gave me over the years. And Diane and I, you know, we've talked about this a lot. We've, I preached on this a lot, this story of Jonathan and his armor bearer. And we've, we usually preach on it from the standpoint of Jonathan, but today we're going to talk about his armor bearer, right? And he's our first unsung hero. He's the first zero to hero. The man doesn't even have a name in the Bible. Like his name is armor bearer. Like if you were playing a game, you know, you were like and everybody in the room became somebody, there'd be a Saul, there'd be a Jonathan, you know, there'd be, an armor bearer. That, that would be the name under the character, right? He's, uh, what's that movie with, with um, that we just watched it recently with um, a guy from Proposal. What's his name? Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. When he plays inside the video game, you know, and he's like, the, oh, free guy. Was it free guy? Free guy. Like or he's Duke. the guy that just yeah. gets killed. That's just in the game and gets fed up with it. He's the unsung hero, right? And uh, so an armor bearer is someone who carries the weapons of their master during a battle. I mean, no, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Uh, armor bearers were known to be confidants. If you spend enough time carrying someone's armor and you spend enough time, right? I mean, armor is important in, to, to battle. 
You know, it would be like somebody that, you know, the, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. It would be like somebody that you trust sharing the word of God over your life. You know, it could be an armor bearer. And if you share that. <laughs> I feel like you're describing me. Yeah, you are. You, unsung hopefully, hero. <laughs> you are. And until you sing it yourself, until you say I'm an unsung hero, until you say, I'm an uns- you're, you're talking about me, an unsung hero. <laughs> Yes, I am talking about you. You are a perfect example of that um, in my life. You are you are an armor bearer, and you don't get a lot of recognition, but you do provide um, your incredible value to me. So I do I do talk. Oh, I am sweet. talking. I am talking about you. I had to ask for it, bait him. For yeah, it. no, I was going to say. Bait him, do it. I would have said it later, but you t- but you know it's okay. That's what most unsung heroes. Armor <laughs> Jonathan's armor bearer is right in the middle of carrying his webs. Be like, hey man, you you think I'm important? <laughs> <laughs> what if I drop these weapons right here? You know, and you got to pick them up before, before you swing the sword. You got to pick it up on your own. You don't think I'm important now? Oh, let me lay this sword down here when Goliath comes up, and let's see. Let's let's give you an extra challenge. <laughs> oh no, you're important. Oh, I had to bait you for it. Oh, I had to bait you for it. Next time, I'm just going to drop the sword. <laughs> uh, that's I love you. You love me. That's I do. All that matters. <laughs> Armor bearers were confidants. And you know what? To be honest, we've, we've, we've shared, we've, there's things that only you and I know, you know, and there's things that, that, that exist only within our marriage. And marriage is a perfect example of that. Um, unsung hero, but an armor bearer is a confidant and they're trustworthy. And, and, you know, and here's the thing, n- not unlike a spouse, they're personally recruited you know, by the warriors and kings, meaning they're interviewed. This is a this is a sacred position, and this is something that should be taken that way. So, um, you know, this is a story we're familiar with. The Old Testament story is in First Samuel. If you want to look it up, it's an awesome story, and, and there's some revelation within this story that are that's incredible over the years that God's shown me that I think is really cool. But the Old Testament story is in First Samuel 14 and 15, and it talks about the Philistines, right? The army that gathered right? 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen and soldiers as against them, right? This is as many as the sands of the sea. And they were against the army of Israel. And when the men of Israel saw that they were in danger, some of them hid in caves, right? Some of them went and hid behind rocks and in holes. And, and it, left only, it left only 600 fighting men. It left only 600 fighting men with the, you know, with King Saul to add to their problem, you know, and so, um, it, and so King Saul and his son, Jonathan had no weapons to fight as well. And so, you know, uh, you know, so this, this is where we find the story and they were, they were sleeping under a tree and they were hiding under a tree, a hiding case, and they were sleeping and they had no weapons. And so that's where we find the story. And it was then that Jonathan fed up with this whole scenario, you know, says to his young armor bearer, he said, come, let's go to the other side. And let's, you know, let's go to them and fight. And it may be that God will help us. (laughs) It may be that God will help us. And his armor bearer, this is where the armor bearer comes into the scene, right? Right. you could look at me and be like, David, that's stupid. And you've done that. David, that's, that's, that's just not wise. No, David, we can't do that. No, David, we can't. We should. Here's what the armor bearer said. Without any resistance, he said, do all that you have in your mind. Go ahead. I'm with you. And I'm, do everything that's in your heart and soul. His armor bearer had his back. And so let's pick up there. When you think of that. Diane. I gotta say it. She texted me. That's why. If you guys wonder why I lost complete train of thought, she texts text me. You know, I'm looking like this. She's like, and she's doing this. I'm thinking, okay, she's got like a revelation and everything. And I'm like, I'm like trying to read it. Look, and the microphone is blocking my like face recognition, so I'm trying to read the notes and and do this. And, and so I lost my train of thought. And I read it, and she's like, I'm holding back a cough. <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> Diana's is, Diana's is staring at me as she like before the text cough. even hits my phone. She's staring at me to get my attention so I can mute the microphone so she can cough. It's okay, baby. She so she coughed nonetheless, and then I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" She coughed anyway, so it's fine. It's okay, baby. What do you guys say about an armor bearer, though? This is this is this is a great show today. It really was what makes it to my. Well, opinion. I was hoping someone was gonna be my armor bearer and not expose me. <laughs> 
talk, 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 talk. There you go. I got you. I and I was trying that. to be conscious of the mic, but um, I think air, armor bearers are important for a couple reasons. One, they're a support system. And I think that we all need a support system in life, um, no matter where that is. And sometimes in the beginning, you know, that's our, our family, our immediate family, our, our mother, our father, our, our, our children, whatever, mm-hmm. or your, your siblings. Um, that's one thing I could say probably that's really special. David and I were at home. Um, yesterday, and I was cleaning up after Christmas. We had a lot of people at the house. I was mopping all of our floors. It was a tough job, guys. I was mopping everything. It took me all day. But at the end of the day, we were sitting down, and we were just talking that our kids, our son was in town and his girlfriend, and then um, obviously Ashton and Matias, and then Alexis and Mikey and Adelie live here. But they they spend time with us as a group, but they rarely just go together by themselves. So when they were going to go um, have brunch and stuff yesterday, I was like, no, I got too much to do. They went out and they hung out all day. And I told David, that's kind of amazing because they're kind of like almost armor bearers for one another. They're in community and they they want to be around each other. Sometimes, you know, our, our family <laughs> members, we don't want to be around them, but we have to be, right? Because holidays are certain people. There is Aunt Betty that you didn't really want to see Thanksgiving or Christmas, but you've seen her. So I think that it's really important that, that intricate parts of your life there are people that are that are going to be that for you. Another reason is support system, being able to talk and be candid about where you're at. Um, another thing is that they, an armor bearer, if they're a true armor bearer, so they're behind you, right? They're going to see things behind you that you don't see because you're looking forward. And so then the enemy comes from behind. There's a, there's a place in your life or a, a place that the Lord or the enemy just going to come in, in a small area. But an armor bearer, a true armor bearer is going to be truthful and say, hey, I see this area. And if you don't do something about it, I think it could <laughs> cause you harm or, or take you down a wrong path. So I think har- armor bearers, they're the hidden, hidden people in your life a lot of times. And you, you started out the show by saying a lot of times armor bearers are there to help the, the star shine, right? So it's those people that kind of make you um, better in what you're doing. There, there's people that, you know, come behind you and, and guide you and lead you. And a lot of times they, they do go, you know, without without being noticed and stuff like that. But they're still important. They're probably some of the most important um People, well, they are the some of the most important people in your life because they're the ones that are going to be a true armor bearer is going to be candid and tell you you are being stupid, mm-hmm. or hey, that is a bad choice, or hey, watch out to your right, you know, whatever. Yeah, and but but they also say do everything in your heart it, because it, I think they do yeah. it all. They do they, they do it all. They've got your back, so they're for you. They're not against you. They're not they're not there to hold you back. They've got your back, but they're not they're not there to hold you hold you back. I'm going to say that again. That's important if you're taking notes. They've got your back, but they're not there to hold you back. They're there really because God's called you in them. He's called you to a purpose greater than what, you, what you're doing now, greater than what you feel like you can accomplish, or even greater than you can accomplish on your own. You need an armor bearer. If you have an armor bearer in, assigned to your life or in your life, or if you're an armor bearer for someone, can I just tell you there's bigger things ahead? Because that's the purpose for an armor bearer. It's like, it's like when you are, you know, and you're by yourself and you're just a one man show in a business and you're just working, you know, doing everything yourself. You may not need an assistant. You may not need these other layers. But when you, when you need an assistant, it's because you're, you're going places where maybe you need an assistant. You know, when you, when you need, you know, this other layer, it's because it, the responsibilities are there to add that. And, um, and so, you know, and I love this too, because Jonathan, if we, we read this in the 14th chapter, you know, it, it, it seemed foolish and life-threatening because this is the guy that's off by himself. First of all, 600 men, if all the men were fighting against the army of 30,000, that would be an outnumbered foolish decision in some people's mind. Like, don't you guys go up against those 30,000? There's only 600 of you. Much less when a man, one man, and his armor bearer leave that 600 because they're sleeping, by the way. One of the sto- parts of this story I think is necessary is that they were unsatisfied. They were dissatisfied with status quo. They were not happy where things were in, in the way things were. Because Saul and his men, <clears throat> they, were, they were content and they were sleeping. <clears throat> and actually, even though they were men that were still there to fight, only Saul and Jonathan and his, had, had weapons. The other men had no weapons. They were sleeping under a pomegranate tree. <clears throat> and then so Jonathan fed up with the scenario, said, let's do something about it. I'd rather die in, and then be, than just sit here and do nothing. And so Jonathan's decision seemed foolish and life-threatening, but his armor bearer stood by him without resistance. So can I just say this? Jonathan initially wasn't even sure whether God was in his plan. 
He wasn't even sure because God said, later on in the story, God tells him, gives him a fleece, so to speak. If you, know, if you go up and they say, come down to you, I'm with you. If they say, stay there, you know, then, then, then stay there, then run. But you know, the deal is, Jonathan wasn't even sure God was in his plan, but his armor bearer replied, do all you have in your mind, go ahead, I'm with you. And other armor bearer's like, I'm, I'm in this thing. So the armor bearer's heart, let's say it this way, was completely surrendered to his master, to his loyalty for Jonathan. And, it, and even above his own life, he regarded it. And, um, and I believe this too, an armor bearer will, will, will encourage, right? Gives courage to the, the person that they're with. An armor bearer, he, Jonathan's armor bearer gave immense courage to Jonathan through his words. You know, one thing you, you kind of alluded to it, but we, we did some studying on this early on in our ministry career or ministry uh, calling where, you know, they say that a lot of armor bearers, they fought back to back, you know, or the armor bearer and the person they were, they were bearing armor for were back to back. You know, you see a lot of times in these movies where like two people fighting with a circle around them, they go back to back, you know, and they can kind of cover everything. An armor bearer would do that. And if you think about it, if they're going to bear the armor, they may like a caddy. You know, in golf, they're gonna hand him a three iron. Can you mean like if your if your armor bearer was out of it one day, you know, like you're up against you're up against like something where you need a big sword as you know what I mean? It's like all of a sudden they pull out like a little like a little like a little, a little knife, dagger, a little dagger, a little like, dagger, but like this, you know, you're like, hey man, wrong club, you know, wrong <laughs> like, club. Hey, I need a three, three iron. What are you spreading butter over here? What are we? <laughs> <laughs> three iron, quick, quick. <laughs> Sand of wedge. Instead of a broadsword, it's a dirk. <laughs> So like an armor bearer, you know, I mean, they just handed them the right, the right weapon. But as Diana said, they also, they also have their back. Well, I think what's interesting is that they may, your armor bearer is there and they, they may say, hey, I don't think this is a wise decision. But what was really important, I think he and what you just said in the first Samuel 14, 7 is do all that you have in your mind. Different versions say different things. Do all that you, do what you think is best as a new, new living translation. So I think an armor bearer is a support system, but they don't overstep. So they still say, hey, what's in your heart? Right. Hey, I, I don't think that's wise, but I'm still going to be supportive. How many knows that there's times in your life that you have people in your life that maybe they're making some things you still have to be supportive, even though you don't think it's necessarily the wisest choice, but you're going to be a support system so that, one, if it is a success, you're there to celebrate with them, right? Mm-hmm. But two, if they start to you know wobble on the knees and fall, you're there to pick them up, too. So I think a, a armor bearer is a support system that celebrates, but I think it's also a, a person that at the same time is there to pick you up and sometimes cover you mm-hmm. so that you're not exposed, that when you make those areas, that there's someone that covers you. When I say cover you, not condone, you know, sin, but love you through it enough to cover you and so that you can work through those things with the Lord's help without... They got your back. Yeah. They got your back. And so, can, can, so wrapping this up today, because we did start a little late, you know, um, an armor bear's heart, you know, is... is is in the right place. And so at the end of this whole story here, God rewards the boldness of Jonathan and his armor bearer with a victory confirmation. And so they climb the cliffs, right? And they reach the post, you know, and, and here's what happens because God's in it. And then we're two or more gathered. That's the Bible talks about the power of agreement, you know, a lot, a, two, a threefold cord. So two with God, you know, a two agree on earth is touching anything they ask. It shall be done for them by my father, which is in heaven. We're, we're, you know, we're two or more gather in my name. There I am in the midst. And so these two, right, with God's plan, go to the top of this post, you know, then panic falls on the enemy's camp, you know, and, and then Jonathan with his sword and his armor bearer without any weapon, by the way, end up killing 20 men. And then, then there was an earthquake and God saves Israel that day. At the end of it all, here's the deal. The people claim Jonathan has accomplished, you know, great deliverance for Israel. You can read that in 1 Samuel 14, 45. The crowds cheer for Jonathan, but his armor bearer went unnamed and unnoticed. Can I just say this? Without the armor bearer's backing, Jonathan would not have won the battle for Israel. I want to Amen. say one thing. Dumasani touched on another story, but it talks about it, about Gideon, about going in a scary place. An armor bearer is going to go with you, is going to be with you. Good times, bad times, scary times, ugly times. They're going to be there with throughout, mm-hmm. throughout, and they're going to be. I think they're going to appropriately guide you, celebrate, pick you up, cover you, encourage you. They're going to correctly 
be who they need to be in your life. And I think that takes, if you find yourself and that you know in your heart that you're an armor bearer to somebody, stay close to God. Yeah. In the stay Hebrew- focused on that because I think that you need the leading of the, to be a, a good armor bearer, you need the leading of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. to be able to guide you in that. Yeah, man. Hebrew word for armor bearer, by the way, is means lift up. It means lift up. Jonathan's armor bearer played that role. He, he lifted up his burden physically, emotionally, right? Just like a, the best buddy, right? It, who stands beside you, the, the spouse that's, that's with you, the one who encourages you. It means to lift up. Amen? And Ecclesiastes 4, 9, 10, we kind of alluded to this, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help him. Amen. Let's be an armor bearer today. That's our first unsung hero from zero to hero. Don't miss tomorrow so we can, so you can see who we're going to bring out and uh, who we're going to discuss. Amen. Day two. Thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys are enjoying this series. We hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. We hope you guys are doing what I'm doing and thinking back this year going into 2022 and what you guys are planning. But we have some things in store coming up next year, so make sure you guys stay tuned to all of us on social media. But if you guys would like, we have a daily encouragement text that goes out every single morning, Monday through Friday. Um, at 8.30 a.m. You guys can opt into it by texting the letters EZGC to 813-522-3356. To everybody who is in our live audience, thank you all for being with us every single morning, every morning that you can be here. We appreciate you always being here. But if for any reason you can't make it to the live streams, you can always keep up with us in two ways. Number one, go on to YouTube and search Game Changer Podcast Live. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you get notified because we do upload the replays of these episodes every single day at 3.30 p.m. EST. If you prefer, we also have the audio version of these podcasts available on all major podcasting platforms, the biggest being Apple Podcast and Spotify Podcast. So make sure that you guys, whichever one you listen on, you subscribe to us on that platform. If you're listening or watching this episode on replay, you guys can always join us live on Facebook and YouTube live every single morning at 8.30 a.m. EST. Just search Game Changer Podcast live on either platform and we will show right up. If you guys have not already read it, it is perfect as you go into 2022. Everybody's planning for next year, laying out their goals, laying out their plans, everything. But make sure that you guys check out our newest Bible plan blueprint. It is the perfect read as well as podcast series that we followed along with Um a couple of weeks ago that you guys could follow along with as you read through it. Um, it's a five-day reading plan on you version of the Bible app, so make sure you subscribe to it, read through it, and then let us know what you think. But thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And on that note, we out.